Hello! Hi everyone! What can you see in the video? It is a digital camera from 2006 and I found it a couple of weeks ago and I had a very good idea to retrofit in a very invasive way that camera. So I have started to disassemble, remove all the screws and since the battery was already dead in that camera, I had to figure out a way to, to get that camera work again. And I came up with the idea that I will install an ESP to control um, as a shooter, to create some time-lapse, all the DC-DC in, into that, uh, that camera, and in the end of the day I would have a remote-controlled camera with an ESP, and uh, the power source would be coming directly from the ESP, and it would be working uh, with just simply soldering the wires to, to the points where the battery is connected on the main board. So I did that and I have tested my idea as you can see in the video, which is speeded up a bit. So after the installation procedure, everything was back into place and it was time to test. And the first results were very promising. The LED was uh, showing green, blinking red and everything was fine to go. But what happened? It, it was not working, so it was time to troubleshoot. And I took the multimeter for that. My feeling were that the voltage is not sufficient for the battery. Ah, and it's almost right, so like I need 3.7 volts for, for to simulate the battery. And uh, let's readjust the, the potentiometer in the DC DC because that could, could help and uh, we, we could figure it out. And after doing the few adjustments, the camera were very promising, so it was starting and it was a big surprise for me. And I was able to see the map, the time, the time zone, the original feeling when you turn that camera on in 2006. But wait, something happened, the battery were exhausted. How could be that be possible, because I, I have ordered the fixed source of a DC DC and an ESP. Now is the time to rethink and go back to the drawing board. And it's time for plan B. So I have decided I will use lithium ion battery instead of the ESP32's power. And by the way, I will leave a separate video where I'm talking about the charging module of the lithium-ion battery and you will find the link in the description below. And also, since we are talking about a different topic and we are going deeper in the next moment, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. As you might have noticed, I have already removed the ESP from the system itself and I have only a, D a DC DC attached, which I will remove later because it makes no sense uh, since we have a, the charging module attached directly over there and it's it's powering my, my camera. And also it turned out during the test that I won't need the ESP because the camera is capable for continuous shooting based on a different time frame so I can achieve my end goal to create a time lapse uh, as the feeling of 2006. And after doing the tests, I had the feeling I'm done with, uh, with the camera building because actually I just attached a battery to that and with the charging module and it was working so like I was happy and I have I took some time to charge the batteries and actually I have think about how to to mount to look it better or the battery should be really close to the camera to have a fixed position and I came up with like you will see you will see in the next picture and as the end result in my opinion I had a really cool looking camera from quality standpoint it's a 
totally different story. So I had achieved my time lapse and I have some footage which is coming from a 20 years old camera, almost 20 years old camera. So you decide. But and the end, don't forget to hit the subscribe and the like button. Thank you very much, I wish you an amazing day.